we'll we proceed with the next talk. Uh, uh, Julian or Julian? Hello. Yes. Uh, you are so it's Julian. Okay, okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you can uh, share your camera, and yes. uh, Arthur already load your uh, slides. So welcome, and um, uh, so uh, Julian is an engineering student at the ISAE Supaero, <laughs> interested in space systems and software development. Worked uh, on the uh, Lapling project uh, during the uh, internship uh, with Thibault, and uh, uh, he's currently on his uh, gap year studying control theory in Moscow. Uh, and he's gonna tell us how the modern web technologies can be used to create software tools for CubeSat mission design. So, the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Montas. Um, so I'm really glad to be here. And uh, yes, so I will be talking about uh, this project, uh, Laplink. Uh, I took part in this project uh, during an internship with uh, Thibaut Gato, as it was told. And the idea behind this project is uh, to use modern web technologies um, for uh, link budget uh, calculation. Um, so, first of all, uh, this project uh, starts with the uh, Nanostar project. Um, this is a result of the cooperation of multiple European actors. And the idea is to have a set of tools, uh, open source tools, for student projects for Nanostat. Um, development. And one of these tools uh, is uh, GSATORB. Uh, it was developed at uh, ISAE Superhero, and uh, the goal was to add um, link budget calculation capabilities uh, to this tool. So, about uh, link budgets, uh, really quickly, uh, the idea behind the uh, link budget is uh, to take into account uh, all the links, uh, all the gains and losses along a transmission path. And since there can be many of them, uh, the use of tools is really uh, helpful to take all of them into account. So some of the available tools, uh, for instance, there are multiple uh, calculators for link budget online. online. Um, they are uh, really, they can be really useful, but they are a bit simple for some use cases. Uh, there is also uh, another tool which is a predecessor from GSATORB, which is called SATORB. And um, the issue with this tool is that it's not open source. Otherwise, it's a great piece of software because it is used um, for educational purposes, uh, which is what interests us with uh, Leplink. Uh, there is also uh, the AMSAT spreadsheet. A uh, great tool because it is quite comprehensive and you also have a lot of documentation uh, to help understand. So for student projects, great tool. And out there, there are also uh, Python libraries that are able to do link budget calculation, dynamic link budget calculation even. And so we wanted uh, to use uh, those libraries uh, within our project uh, to build upon in order to have an ergonomic tool for link budget calculation. So we use the Python link predict uh, with the link just below, uh, which I recommend you check it out if you don't know about it because it's well documented. Uh, be interesting to use. So the first step was to build our standalone uh, project. Here is a really basic overview of the project. Uh, the idea is that the user connects with his web browser uh, to our application. And the, the application then handles all communication with the API and um, the Python libraries in order to do link budget calculation. So here is a quick look at what the application looks like. Um, on uh, the middle, you have uh, this uh, part where you can tweak some values uh, for your link budget. You have a part with documentation uh, you can also see uh, some quick results on the right. So, about the technologies that were used for this project, I will be talking um, a bit about um, the web uh, framework, about web application framework, especially Angular, since this is the one we used. Uh, Angular relies on TypeScript. 
that script is a superset of JavaScript. This is basically JavaScript with some typing capabilities and other stuff also. Uh, it's a really great language, really interesting, uh, nice to work with. And so the question that arises is why would we need uh, to use a um, um, web application framework? Well, uh, the idea with web application framework is uh, to have a faster development pr process because they provide all the boilerplate code that we need. Uh, there are built-in capabilities for form handling, for instance, inside Angular. Uh, you also have a lot of tools that help us uh, build an optimized application. And there are many uh, different web application frameworks uh, like Vue.js or React.js, which we heard from a bit earlier. And all of them have in, in common uh, this paradigm that uh, in, our, in an application, everything is a component. And this is a really interesting thing because it means that um, the concerns are really well separated and that these components can be uh, reused independently. So the reason we stick with Angular for Leplink is that it was already used inside GSATOR. So it made more sense if we wanted to integrate our project uh, to keep working with Angular. Uh, which leads us to, um, so this part about components, this leads us to the single page application concept. On classical websites, uh, when you click a link, you will load a new web page. Um, but on a web application, what happens is that since everything is a component, what you need is only to, to load uh, the components that you don't already have. Um, and you can reuse those that are already used. And this is interesting uh, for two main reasons, uh, because this leads to a more coherent navigation experience. You don't need to reload the whole page, but also you have some faster loading times while using the application. The only downside being that uh, you lose a bit of, um, it's a bit slower at the first start. Also, uh, thanks to Angular, we are able to generate these uh, test reports just here. So these are some unit tests that were written uh, for the application. Uh, we also have some uh, Docker containers available on GitLab if you want to test it out. And another important part of this project was uh, the ergonomy. Well, uh, I am not a, a user experience designer, but uh, with this project, I still had to deal with some uh, issues, some kind of issues related to user experience. And what was really interesting and important was to make sure to avoid any user frustration or making our interface confusing. Uh, so basically, our application, it's a big form where the user has to input a lot of information and then we can transmit it to the libraries. Uh, well, it can seem simple, but in fact, uh, there are entire books dedicated to forms. So it's not that straightforward. Uh, just as an example, here we have um, an example. Uh, if you want the user to input units, how do we do it? We can think uh, of using drop downs. We can think of laying out all the different possibilities side by side. Uh, the issue with the drop down is that you need one more click. One more click doesn't seem much uh, compared to the alternative, but since the user has to input dozens and dozens of fields, uh, it can become a bit uh, frustrating. But on the other side, uh, the alternative, if you have a lot of units, it quickly the interface quickly becomes cluttered. So there is always some kind of compromise to find uh, in order to have an accessible and an accessible application and to avoid all ambiguity. Once we had this uh, first part of the application, the idea was uh, to integrate it inside the GSET. It was our first goal. Um, thanks to how uh, we had um, components, we could just put them inside modules in order to create um, an Angular library. So this is almost the same um, uh, the same graph as before, only that now you have this library component, 
And what this means is that you can simply use any Angular application, load the library here on the left in blue, and you can use this library contains all the necessary components. And this means that in any Angular application, you can import Leplink and uh, start using it. So I wanted to show you a small demonstration. Um, OK. I think it works. So just to see. Yes, yes, we can. Work. Great. So here is GSETORM. You have a um, cesium visualization here with uh, satellites moving in real time. Uh, we import our project, go to Leplink, where we can choose a satellite to work with, import the data, and then we can trick our values uh, regarding uh, links. Here we are changing the frequency of the uplink. We can compute. Uh, everything is sent to the backend. We see that here our requirements of 10 dB are not uh, fulfilled, so we increase the transmitter power, compute again, get our results, and then, of course, we can uh, export our results to be used later. We can also uh, save the whole project if we want uh, to work again later. So this was to show you some sort of typical use case of this project and have a better idea of what it looks like. Okay, back to the presentation. So, oh, okay, here are some backup slides. Uh, so, if we want to draw a conclusion from all of this, well, um, the idea was to show how um, web technologies uh, could be useful for such uh, engineering problems, for such uh, projects. And we've also seen how easy it was to interface together multiple tools from Python Lang Predict to GSATOR. Uh, so Lopink was a bit um, like a project in between. And I think that it, it would be really interesting to see what could be done with other issues, other problems. And uh, we, yesterday we had a great talk about Docs, which has kind, of, which is um, uh, has the same uh, problematics as um, Nanostar and GSATOR in part. So maybe it would be interesting to see some kind of um, collaboration. Uh, thank you very much for your time and for your attention. Uh, thank you, Julian. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, uh, the links that you have over there, you also hosting the the app, the application, or is also only the code in the links? Um, well, uh, we tried hosting the application, uh, but uh, we weren't successful because of um, at first we wanted to host it on the is a superheroes infrastructure, but we had some issues with um, VPNs and uh, such things. So there still are uh, the Docker files that are available, the Docker images that are available on the GitLab project. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. For, uh, so there are questions, uh, three already. Uh, uh, the first one is from... Uh, uh, the, uh, how, who's, I don't know the, how to pronounce this. Uh, Possible to adapt uh, yes. slash extend simulator to optical links? Well, um, since uh, it is uh, built uh, around uh, a library, a Python library for backend, uh, well, in theory, it is possible uh, to add optical links, uh, but uh, it wasn't um, it wasn't really uh, the 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 use case. Uh, when we, we build it, so we might need some adjustments in order to make it work for optical links. Okay, and, and the second question from uh, Arthur, uh, how complex was to get the uh, graphics working in Angular and uh, uh, animation or yes. static? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think um, I think we're talking about the moving graphs. Uh, uh, so for this, uh, if I go back to the different tools used, uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, this is done using d3.js. Uh, here we, here it is. 
if you just switch handles uh, SVGs, uh, vector graphics uh, using JavaScript. So let's say that it wasn't easy, but once it uh, started working, uh, it was fine. Um, it, it took some time, but it took some time, some fine tweaking, trying different solutions. Uh, but in the end, I think this part is not uh, is uh, clean enough. Okay, okay. And uh, another question, uh, just uh, got in uh, by Zem. Uh, how do you take into account different location on map uh, slash different beams, etc.? Okay, uh, I think we are talking about um, about GSATORB, uh, the visualization, this thing maybe. Um, so this is done uh, using uh, cesium, uh, which is uh, open source software. Uh, the idea is that uh, okay, with regards to calculation. Oh, all right. Okay, so uh, the way it is handled is uh, that uh, the reason uh, the position is not taken into account. Uh, what is taken into account is the distance um, between uh, the both antennas, uh, the height of the, of the station, of the current station, and uh, it doesn't depend uh, on uh, the position on the globe. Do you take uh, 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 atmospheric losses and other, uh, uh, like mi mi misalignment of the satellite and uh, antenna in yes. account? So, yes, um, so it is handled by uh, the backend, by the Python library. And since uh, there was already this possibility, we, uh, we added uh, the different losses, atmospheric losses, um, misalignment uh, they were already available so we just had to add a field make sure everything worked fine so yes these are taken at our, into account uh, the model is simple it's a simple model where you have to give uh, your own losses maybe it could be um, it could be uh, how to say it improved uh, by uh, requiring less uh, thought from the user but for now, you can uh, choose some loss, some security margin. Okay, okay, okay. And do you describe uh, somehow the the antenna radiation pattern, or is? Uh... Uh, well, there was this. Um, I tried just yes, to have um, at first uh, some antenna patterns, uh, but uh, this part was a bit uh, a bit complicated. So in the end, uh, we didn't add it antenna, antenna Spartan, but uh, it would be really doable uh, to have to export, uh, to import into the application an antenna pattern that would be transmitted uh, to the Python libraries. There was an attempt, but uh, it didn't succeed uh, in the end. Okay, so more hands are needed, yes? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So, another question, uh, I can't see, okay, ah, oh, just appeared one, Arthur, uh, uh, it appears that the app uh, uh, lapping uh, could be framework for other backend libraries, is it thermal analysis, DC? do you consider to make uh, lapping more generic uh, to use for such uh, cases, interesting question. Well, yeah, really interesting question. Um, it, it hadn't been, the, we haven't thought really much about uh, adapting it to other uh, cases, but uh, I think that this approach might be uh, might be adapted to other cases, uh, thermal analysis uh, and others. So maybe there is something to, to look at uh, in this direction and uh, think about making it more generic. I think it would be a, a great thing to have something more generic. It would be just more modular, more robust. Uh, but this hasn't been done uh, already. Okay, I want to add the power budget option too. <laughs> uh, it's critical for missions, can, uh, especially for small missions. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you for you your very much.